first rental property I bought the day was 12, 12, 12. And I still remember the first rental check I got and I was like, wow, well, this is like almost $500 more than the mortgage payment. Like, wow, this is what passive income is like. So now here we are seven years later and I think it might be time to sell it. Let's go check it out, see what it looks like. And then we can talk about uh, what we want to do next. We want to put another tenant in there, which would be the, I believe, fourth or fifth tenant over the last seven years. Or if it's time to sell it, maybe leverage it and go buy some more real estate. So here's the story. The, the first tenant I ever had in this property is awesome. Paid rent on time, took good care of it. Second tenant came in. They didn't pay rent. I evicted them. And when I went into the property, we'll see if we have pictures. If we do, let's get those up right here. I went in. They had turned one of the bedrooms into a chicken coop. Not even kidding. The property was trashed. On top of that, this is not the nicest property in the world. We'll see here in a minute. I'm proud of this property because it's been an amazing financial investment for me produce so much fruit in the form of cash, but it doesn't look very pretty. It's a mobile home. It's not in a park. It is in a regular neighborhood. So like I, we own the land that it's on, okay? The house and the land. And it's actually, when we first got it, it wasn't bad. Um, but after these they piece people made it, it was so bad. I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? I didn't have the money at the time. I had just gotten into you know buying rentals and stuff like that. And I was trying to put as much into buying the next property, the next property, the next property as properties were cheap at the time. And so I wanted to get it turned over another tenant in there quickly, and I didn't want to put a lot of cash out. So one thing that was awesome is my mortgage payment was only like 358 bucks, and I had been renting it for 900, but the people trashed it. So I'm like, well, I bet if I just rent this super cheap, like 650, I'll get somebody that'll take it as is. So that's exactly what I did. And the guy that's lived there the last however many years it's been, I can pull, we can pull it up four or five years, um, he's now moving out, which is why we're deciding what are we gonna do next. But it was in such bad shape when he moved in. Um, I do know it's a little rougher now because we had a handyman in the area doing something. I don't remember what, a couple months ago I had him stop by and I'm just like, what does it look like? And he took a couple pictures. I was like, oh, it's even worse. I'm a little bit nervous about this one. I don't know how it's gonna look. I mean, it's a mobile home, so it's not like it's gonna be amazing. Um, but I don't know how it's gonna look. Sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised and it's not too bad, but this one, I have a feeling no matter what, I might be a little bit shocked with what we see. Uh oh. Oh no. So I'm not sure what we're gonna find out. As we're pulling up here, we could see the back fence, the block fence, and it was like all broken. Blocks just lying on the sidewalk there. I'm a little bit scared to go inside right now and see what we're gonna find. All right guys, so we are here at the property and you get here and you see the neighborhood and you're like, well, it's, you know, here's the thing. I actually bought this property for just a couple thousand dollars. In fact, I'll pull the HUD and tell you guys the exact amount right here. I was just starting to buy rental properties and I saw this one was listed. I made an offer, she accepted it, but because I was able to um, credit my commission towards the deal, because I'm a licensed agent and was even at the time, um, I got my minimum out of pocket down to just a couple thousand dollars. I just put a little bit of money into it, didn't do much, pretty much left it as is, rented it out, and that's been my strategy the whole time. I've now owned it for, we bought it on 12, 12, 12, and it's, uh, what's today, November 2nd, 2020. So we're going on, I guess, eight years, and we had a couple tenants turn over. It turned this bedroom right here, actually you can see with the sliders, this is the four bedroom four, to turn that into a chicken coop, so it's crazy. So I rented it below market rate, um, just to get it occupied quickly and so I didn't have to put a bunch of money into it and the person paid rent um, for like four or five years Which was awesome and now they're moving out So I don't know what we're gonna find I don't know what I'm gonna do at the property But let's go check it out and I'll let you guys see it You'll know where I'm at as I'm, as I'm looking at it and trying to figure out what the heck we're gonna do here So this is fun <laughs> Three sliders on the sliding and we're in here. It is dirty and I knew it was gonna be dirty because it was dirty um, when they took over and it was dirty a couple times that I saw some pictures just here and there like kind of texting me something Clearly, we've got some roof things. It looks like but you know, it's crazy. This roof was leaking back then even I remember this I think worse I'm actually not I mean just the land value alone. What's cool is we bought this property back in 2012 The property's not up so much. I mean, I'm not really holy cow. You can see the floors falling in here oh. This was the chicken coop room and you can see the floor soft in some of these areas. It still smells like chickens. Cabinets are falling off. Looks like this floor more done better place. And then you've got... One thing that's cool, this property has been legally affixed to the property, this mobile home. That's a big thing with mobile homes. Is they've been legally attached to the property. 
or is it viewed from a real estate perspective as a trailer on property? Most trailer parks, the trailer is looked at like an RV, like they literally go through the DMV for titles and stuff like that, and then the property it's on, it's usually one huge parcel that rents space to all those mobile homes. So when you can buy a mobile home that's on attached land, like this one is, that's obviously much better because you're not paying space rent, so you can actually cash flow it. You know, you own the real real estate. What's cool about this one is it is legally attached to it. So you can have a mobile home on land that you own that's not in a park and it's still not legally attached. And going through the process is a big pain in the butt, but we actually did that. It's nice that it's legally um, attached, yeah, because somebody can actually come in here and it's crazy. I mean, you got holes in the walls, holes in the floor, holes in the floor, cabinets are falling off. It's, it's in really rough, rough condition. The ceiling looks like it's coming in, um, but somebody, theoretically might come in here and actually put this back together. I wouldn't be totally surprised if they do. We're falling apart down here. You know, and obviously you wonder, you're like, what? why would tenants live like this? But here's the thing, they pay rent every month, usually with late fees, they'd be like a week or two, sometimes he'd fall even like a month behind and late fees would be outrageous and he would always come up with it. Like I said, the last tenants already trashed this property, so I don't think it can look much worse than it was before, but obviously it's pretty rough. Now we're gonna check out the backyard and it is bright. So guys, this property started off, here's why I bought this property. Back in 2012, I made an offer on this and I put almost no money down and they accepted my offer. In fact, my commission took care of my down payment. So I came into this property, I think I was out of pocket, just like maybe one or $2,000 and that was like getting it cleaned up. It looked a lot better actually than it does right now. Um, later tenants came in and they trashed it, had to evict them. Tenants moved in as is. It still cash flowed about $300 for another three years. Um, at that point, I refinanced the property into a 10 year fully amortized loan. But because the loan amount from when I bought it was already so low, that payment was still low. And I was able to continue to rent it out at a decreased rental amount to the guy that was living here. But at the same time, minimized my repair costs. And so, by not having to fix it up and just taking less rent, that saved me instead of coming out of pocket several thousand dollars, I would still lose that several thousand dollars in rent, but I could do it over several years. And since the property was cash flowing so well, I was okay with that. In fact, a few years later, the loan was called due. The seller financing loan that I got was originally a five-year loan, and this was back in, I think it was 2017, 18. It was due. What happened, the seller who had sold me the property, she had ended up selling the note which you can do, you can actually sell or carry something and then you can sell that loan to somebody else. So she sold the loan to an investor up in the state of Washington, Vancouver, Washington. I contacted him, I said, hey, the loan's almost due, are you interested in extending this out or writing a new note? He said, I am, but I wanna go from interest only to principal and interest, fully amortized over 10 years and I want 6%. And I went, whoa, 6%, not a bad interest rate for an investment, especially on a mobile home which banks won't touch, even hard money lenders typically won't touch as rental properties, as long-term holds. Um, but this private guy that had already bought the note, he said he was willing to do it for 10 years. So the payment went up because I went from interest only where it was uh, my payment with taxes and insurance was $357. The payment went up to about $850. At the time I was running it for $650, which was a $300 discount off of what it would be rent rented for had I put at the time maybe five or $10,000 to put, get it back to normal. So it was okay taking a decreased rental amount. At this point, I went back to the tenant. He had been here at $650 for a couple years. I said, hey, I got increased rent to $850. I could put this back together now and rent this for $1,200 or $1,300. So I'll still give you a break, but I need you to at least you know up it to $850. What that did was that covered my new loan and then I was in a permanent 10-year loan paying it off at a low interest rate. Pretty low for a mobile home, definitely low at 6%. So the payment went to 850, I was breaking even, but he's running it as is. So I wasn't putting any money into it. He paid rent and with late fees, I probably averaged about $1,000 a month, actually on average. So it really probably did cash flow and values were just going like this. So here we are, it's 2020. I think now we bought the property originally for 70,000. I made the commission myself. I wanna say the loan was like 629. Now we owe like, gosh, I think it's like 50,000 on it. And we can probably sell this in its crappy condition for maybe $100,000. And here's what's really cool. We can take that money and instead of paying capital gains taxes, we can take that $100,000 
and put it as down payment to buy more properties. We could buy up to three more properties with that $100,000 tax free. And let's say we buy our own wholesale deals. And so each one of those properties we buy has $20,000 minimum built in equity, right? Well, that's 20, 20, 20. That's adding $60,000, right, to the net worth. Plus, now we own three properties, which are gonna continue to appreciate. As things get more expensive in life, the dollar becomes worth less. That's what a lot of people refer to as inflation. Real estate will continue to, to offset that and protect us from that. So real estate's a great uh, way to hedge ourselves against inflation, and what better way to do that with three properties rather than one. So we'll, we'll end up having hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity from an investment that we literally put a couple thousand dollars into. And yeah, hey, it doesn't look pretty. I mean, look, we got the fence falling apart. This, I think, used to be a swimming pool probably years ago before we bought it. Um, I've never been able to figure out why there's so much concrete back here. It's crazy. But at the end of the day, we had a four bedroom, two bath property in a good Mesa area. We're not, we're about 15 minutes from ASU right now, Arizona State University. We're about five minutes away from Mesa Community College. We're about two minutes away from the freeway. So you've got a huge yard here, the carport on the other side, four bedrooms, two bath on soil. What more could you ask for? And just, you know, taking that investment at a couple thousand dollars. Now I was very active in managing it. Um, but I really, I never came over here and fixed anything. I never touched a hammer, I never did anything. I'll still continue to do that. We're gonna take pictures right now. We'll send it out as a wholesale deal. It's my first thoughts because of the condition that it's in. And I bet we get a hundred grand for this thing. I really do, because fixed up, you could probably sell this thing for close to $200,000 with the square foot and stuff like that. So that's why I was saying, somebody out there who's got the cash, who's got the sweat equity and they'll do the work themselves, etc., where they have cheap labor, will probably come in here, do the minimum, but kind of restore it um, and sell it off. Or maybe they could put a brand new mobile home on here. I mean, there's different options. But either way, we've we put a couple thousand in, collected rent for all these years uh, in the form of cash flow, and now we'll we'll get a big back end payday. So that's why I love real estate. There's just so much control. But I would challenge anybody out there, you know, show me an investment um, that's better that you can put a couple thousand dollars into, manage it over the course of however many years, which is really text message, emails, couple posting on Craigslist, work with a couple situations, adjust your numbers, and come out making. I mean, we'll have to calculate the ROI and put this on this video right here, but. This ROI has to just, the ROI of this deal has to just be astronomical, 2,000 in and then for what the, gosh, especially by the time we leverage this into new properties, like and then those cash flow. Lifetime value from that original $2,000 investment will just be like, that's insane. So that's why I love real estate. So all things considered, it really wasn't that bad. I know that might sound surprising, but when you look at our return on investment, the way it looks right now, I'm pretty excited. So we hey bro, how's it going? Good, Jose, what's up man? Sorry, I was trying to get off the line as you were calling me. Well, I hope you were on the line for another house, not the manufactured home. <laughs> it was a manufactured home, but they haven't pulled the trigger yet. My phone, uh, several people have called me and are driving by it right now, but to the minute it hasn't sold yet. I think it's going to oh, any mind. second. So fuck everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> You're the man. Te text me over the entity you want to close in, and I'll shoot it over to you in about five minutes. Okay, cool. Let's do that, man. Crash City, man. Thanks, bro. So that's cool. Jose is going to buy it. I was feeling a little emotional with this thing going out this morning. I literally just sent email, uh, Tess an email because she responded. She got the blast and said something about the payoff. And I was like, I almost feel bad letting this little pooper scooper go. I'm like, it's been such a little golden goose. It's such a nice. And we bought it on 12, 12, 12. And it was the second rental property I ever bought. We bought this property on 12, 12, 12. I remember it vividly. It was the second property I bought. We're selling it on 11, 11. It's kind of a trip. So it's kind of crazy letting it go. But Jose, I've known him for years. He was actually, I believe, the first buyer that ever, I met him through the Cash Buyer Hack. I got the real estate agent database in Phoenix. This was back in, I want to say it was like 2015. Um, and I was like, I already had a decent sized buyer list, but I got that, sent it out. The first deal, Jose bought it within five minutes. And then since then he's bought, I don't know, five or six properties probably over the last four years or something. But it's cool that he's a really cool guy that's in real estate full time here in Phoenix. And he's not a wholesaler. He has kind of a different unique model, but he's a real estate pro, a local guy that's just a great guy. That'll be really cool to uh, to see how that plays out. And um, I feel really good about that. Yeah, I'm super pumped with the numbers we're getting on this one. I sent it out, actually, I had it ready to go. I was gonna send it out at 100 even. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna send out 105. Market's hot right now and I like this property and we already own it. So if we have to sit on it for a little bit, that's fine. And we got our price, 105. So really quickly, I think it went out. It's 9.53, went out at 9.30. So sold in what, 20, 25 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, super happy with that. Now we got to take that money and we got to go find where we're going to invest that. So we can actually buy more properties with that now and use that as down payments to buy, say, two or three properties. Hopefully they're wholesale deals and already have equity, right? So we're going to just 
maximize this thing, take that, and then we don't have to pay any capital gains taxes because we bought this thing, you know, a lot cheaper, uh, about 60% of what we're selling it for um, eight years ago. So it'll be awesome. And it got tore up. So what a great investment. We bought this property for $5,916 down. Over the time we owned it, we received an additional $22,800 in positive cash flow. In addition to that, the tenants paid down the loan $11,000 for us, and we sold it for a back-end profit of $51,000 at the sale. This brings the total profit on this property to $84,800. Let's go buy another house.